This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You ever stop to think about how expensive lenses are? They're not even like super unique pieces of glass or anything. And by the way, the only 50 mil G Master lens that Sony offers is like $2,600. And then the 16 to 35 G Master is like 3,000. That's so much money. <laughs> lenses are expensive and paying $3,000 for a lens doesn't necessarily work for everyone. So that's why today we're taking a look at this Voltrox 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens because it's $450 and the Sony's aren't. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? The Viltrox is designed for mirrorless cameras and full-frame sensors. The Sony 35mm f1.8 is double the price of the Viltrox, and the 35mm f1.4 G Master is three times as much as the Viltrox. So right off the bat, Viltrox plus one. The build quality is surprisingly good. It's actually metal. It is small in size, but a bit on the heavier side at 29 grams. Overall, I don't find it to be super heavy. It does have a dedicated aperture ring, which is nice, but it isn't haptic. Not really a big issue for me, but it would have been nice if it was. A decent con with the Viltrox is that it has zero weather sealing. So if you're an outdoor shooter and you love a good rainy moody photo, then this is not for you, boo. But what do the photos look like and how does it actually stack up? Why are the Sonys so much more expensive? Well, you're gonna see why. Getting the bokeh out of the way, it does have nice soft round bokeh. However, your overall image is pretty soft wide open. Like, it's usable, but it's really not sharp at f1.8. I honestly wouldn't shoot with it any lower than f2.8 or 4. Now, I didn't test this out myself, but I saw a lot of other reviews that showed on APS-C the quality and sharpness of the images got even worse. You're gonna notice some minimal focus breathing, but honestly, that's not a huge deal to me. You'll also see some distortions around the edges of the frame, especially with straight lines, and you can see this pin cushion effect happening here. The thing is, this is something you can fix in two seconds in post by toggling on the built-in profile correction in Lightroom. You enjoying this video? Cool! Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. It has a not so super impressive minimum focus distance and manual of 0.42 meters or 1.38 feet, which is pretty far. That being said, at the 35 millimeter focal length, I don't find myself shooting that close to my subject anyways. I'm usually a few feet back. With longer lenses, especially macro, this is obviously gonna matter a lot more. The autofocus is pretty good, but for some reason at times, the camera had a hard time finding Lauren's face, which is obviously not ideal. The autofocus speed was good, not quite as fast as my Sony G Master, but still pretty quick to find focus in most scenarios. All in all, if you've been here this far, let's just give you the lowdown on whether it makes sense to save the cash and get a lens like this. As I always say in these videos, the first thing to consider is what are you shooting? What skill level are you at? And what camera body are you shooting with? If you're a beginner or hobbyist shooting with a camera body that has, let's say, anything under 24 megapixels and your photos are mainly for social media where you can't really pixel peep, then yes! This lens is truly a great bang for your buck. 
If you're an intermediate or professional like me, shooting with the camera that has, say, 60.2 megapixels like the a7R 4 and a lot of your photos may end up in print or large format, then buying a lens this soft kind of does a disservice to your body and your work. It's kind of like if you're a chef and you have all the most amazing appliances to work with, but your ingredients are poor quality. You, being an incredible chef, can only get so far with bad ingredients, despite the amazing appliances you do have. You should always be investing in good quality glass. Lens over body every time. So all in all, yes, optical compromises must be made if you're paying $450 for a lens, but I am pretty satisfied considering the price point, but you guys make the final decision. Is this right for you based on your budget and you know, if you're just posting it on Instagram? right? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. Big thanks to Lauren for being our model today, mm -hmm. and I will see you guys in the next one. And if you want more videos like this or me to talk about another lens, drop it low in the comments. Thanks so much, Mike. Drop it low. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs>